Hello everyone, my name's Pete and I don't like MMOs. Or at least that was my attitude for many years. But now it's time to form an opinion based on my own experience instead of ignorant assumptions. I've only tried two games so far and I've already found one that I quite like and all it took was an open mind. That's not going to stop me exploring more games though, so if you're interested in this journey of first impressions then consider pressing subscribe and dropping any suggestions of MMOs in the comments. Last week I released a video on old school RuneScape. I found it to be very much enjoyable, even in its obvious condition of a grindy time sink. There's enough skills to add variation and the frequent dopamine hits make it quite possibly a dangerous addiction. I received a few comments arguing both sides of RuneScape 3 and decided that I'm going to have to try it for myself. So I find myself here in the character creation screen and I'm pleased to announce the appearance of a randomised button. I press it a few times before I have the fabulous idea of recreating my old school appearance as best as I can. It turns out that I can't get suitably close, so I settle on this look with some rather dashing purple hair. I wasn't asked to pick a name, so maybe that'll come up later. And then the game very kindly asks me what my experience is with RuneScape. Now, I've played a good chunk more since that video, but I'm still very much in the early game, so I can't call myself an expert. And technically, this is a different game, so I'll have to go with being brand new. Because if there's any changes, I should know about them now. Just a click later, and I'm transported to an eerily familiar setting. Is this? Yes. Yes it is. This is the same tutorial island. Okay, I like this. Is the whole game just a visual overhaul? Because that would be both a great and stupid idea at the same time. But let's find out. Outside is the same survival tutor ready to teach me to chop wood, fish, light fires and cook. All very familiar but with a kind of uncanny valley effect. Something's missing and it takes me a few minutes to realise. Maybe it's because I was dazzled by the new graphics, but I failed to notice that I didn't need some miscellaneous items. Things such as a fishing net and tinderbox are no longer needed to complete these tasks now, so maybe the game has been streamlined a little bit. I'll happily take the extra inventory space for sure. The tutorial kindly informed me that I can click on the map to navigate larger distances. Apparently this is also in old school, so that's good to know for my, uh, my not addiction. I'm then given the bread making tutorial and the quest tutorial almost word for word from the old school game and then I'm shoved underground for the mining and smithing. This is all essentially the same but I don't need a pickaxe or a hammer for smithing. These are nice streamlining ideas for the mechanics but then I find out I have to heat my item to effectively smith it and each strike of the hammer visibly increases a progress bar which if anything kind of makes the process more complicated. If there's always a furnace nearby for crafting these things, then what's the purpose of the extra clicks to heat them and, and why remove the hammer for streamlining if you're going to add this in instead? After making my bronze dagger, I'm headed off up to the familiar rat pen. The combat trainer informs me that my name here is also Pete Stinks. That's strange that it should share the account name from old school, but I won't complain. Apparently my butter knife is good enough this time around, as the trainer lets me in without providing a sword. The combat is certainly flashier than it was and there doesn't seem to be any combat options, so I'm wondering how you focus skill progression now. Also, the game decides to not teach ranged combat at this time. Up next is the bank tutorial, which is much shorter this time, and I noticed there is neither the poll tutorial nor the advanced account advice, so is player feedback less important here? Then the prayer tutor says it's a good idea to be nice to people and I happen to agree, so I move on to the wizard's house, which I find first time around this time. Go me. I don't get shown how to cast spells, and there's no Iron Man tutor here, but I'm told about the Lodestone network, which is essentially just fast travel, but I have to visit each location first to unlock it. This just so happens to be my favourite fast travel system, so it gets a nod of approval that you won't see. I also notice while running around that the stamina regeneration is a good deal faster in this version, which is nice because I like to run. And now, the sequence breaks. Reality is torn apart, the matrix blue screens, the fabric of reality is unwoven and the universe bleeds out of existence as I'm teleported off the island, not to Lumbridge, but to a place called Berthorpe. So I shouldn't have expected the game to be identical, that's on me, but to so faithfully recreate the tutorial island and then shove me somewhere completely new is a little bit jarring. Luckily I'm not a long time player, but I would have still liked to have seen a little bit of an updated Lumbridge since you spend so much time there as a new player. It's like they tease me by jogging memories of an old recurring dream and then snap me out of it while I was getting comfortable. I don't even have the play time to develop that nostalgia, but oh well, here I am. Apparently Berthorpe has a problem with trolls and I'm going to help with it. At least having a small purpose helps me feel a little bit in place. But now there are loads of unexplained UI features appearing. One thing the old school tutorial did really well was to make sure I knew the function of every button before releasing me. The failure to do so here is already causing me to be a little bit anxious about pressing something by accident. 
It appears that this time the game intends to hold my hand a little bit longer than the old school tutorial. I'm pointed to a man named Toriel. He tells me a little about the troll problem here and tells me I need to be well prepared so as not to end up like the last adventurer they sent. His corpse is lying a few feet away. I mean, really? Are you not going to clean that up? At any rate, I'm told I should go off and make my own equipment to fight the trolls with. I need to fish, cook the fish, and make a helmet. And while fishing and cooking, I do it in the wrong order, meaning I have to do more fishing and cooking in order to satisfy the quest tracker. But that's just more experience. Then I'm headed to the mines to get the materials to make the helmet. I'm still rather confused about the extra step in heating the item here. The changes they've made, mechanically, are small, but they're having an odd effect on my experience. The grind, which is all the game is about, feels just that little bit less satisfying for whatever reason. Maybe that'll change down the line. I'm still having a good time, I'm just not as charmed as I was by old school. And now I'm given a choice. I can go with what I have to fight the trolls, or I can make a full suit of armour. I choose to make more armour, and in a rather nice twist, I'm given the materials to do so. I also make a bronze ore box which will store the copper and tin ores. This is nice, but I feel like it would make more sense to just make them stack. Especially since the ores don't go in by themselves, and I have to manually place them in the box. This just feels like unnecessary busy work for very little gain. And also, when I finished making the armour, the quest tracker just kind of gave up. I know who to report to, but I found it odd that it would choose now to stop pointing me to the right place, so I just head back to Toriel. He won't progress the quest because I'm carrying too many fish. I try to eat some to clear the inventory space, but apparently I'm not allowed to make that choice because that wouldn't benefit me and just waste fish, you know, as opposed to just dropping them on the floor to clear space. Let me choose what I want to do here, please, game. I can eat while I'm full in real life too. This is why I'm fat. Once I solve my little problem, Torail goes on to explain what looks like a rather in-depth ability system, and I'm a bit taken aback by how complicated this makes the combat seem compared to old school, and I end up not taking in the tutorial properly. I kind of understand the differences between threshold and ultimate abilities, but this isn't a good tutorial for me as I'm not learning by example, so I probably won't remember when it matters. But now it's time to fight the trolls, and on my way to the cave, I examine the dead body of a guard, and it tells me that he is very dead. That's very useful. And then I realise what it is I'm seeing. Why is this allowed in the city? Am I to believe that these low-level trolls have overwhelmed all these well-equipped and trained guards? And why is the entrance to the cave not guarded? Unless you count guarded by dead guys. I enter the cave to find only one healthy guard and several wounded. I try to speak with a wounded guard and my character tells me that I probably shouldn't bother him after he's been beaten up by trolls and I can't disagree with this sentiment. This setup is just weird. We're literally right in the city, so why aren't these guards taken somewhere to recover? Why aren't they replaced? Why aren't the dead guards buried? And why am I, a poorly equipped, untrained nobody, expected to do better? I'll suspend my disbelief for now as best as I can. This is just a game and I don't need to get upset. So I start killing trolls and the combat is fine. There's not as much of a mischance as there was and it certainly looks flashier, but the experience feels just somehow less satisfying and I can't put my finger on it. The looting system seems built for convenience, allowing me to loot in an area, but this wasn't explained at any point and takes me a bit of time to understand. Also, I noticed that the inventory sprites are actually the same ones from old school. This is another weird design choice. After making a whole new graphical style for the world, they skip out on this part. I don't understand. Also, the enemies drop way too much stuff. This means most of it's just going to be ignored because the inventory space is already limited. The killing's fun, but the amount of information on screen and the pace that you chop through the enemies is very different from the original experience, and I'm not sure that's an entirely positive change. The trolls dropped food quite a lot too, so there was really no need to make me catch and cook 12 fish. I killed more than my quota of trolls, so I head back to report a tutorial. He asks me if I want to move on or kill more trolls. And I want to kill more trolls because despite my complaints, the killing is fun. Then I get a tutorial on more abilities, which apparently use themselves in any order of my choosing. This feels like a little bit more busy work and it doesn't make me more interested in the combat grind. It's actually making me feel like I have more to learn before I settle into smack enemies for endless hours. The next step is to go back into the cave and kill a bigger troll, so off I go. And when I enter, the other trolls have magically disappeared, as have all the surviving guards, leaving only myself and the bigger troll to battle it out in this instance. The instancing makes less sense to me than the dead bodies being left to rot in the street. The fight is straightforward. I basically click and start attacking, and then I just eat fish when I'm nearly dead. I press some abilities, but I'm not sure if they made a difference or not. And when he's dead, I bury his bones, which grant a lot of prayer experience. And I like that part, the number went up. And this is the real end of the tutorial, I think. My next step would be to choose from the adventure paths, which is fine, but I preferred the on-screen choice that was presented in Lumbridge. 
This section with the trolls, while it did teach me the extra things I needed, it was kind of meaningless and it added a bit of unnecessary plot. Old school never tried to tell me a story and I was happy to just be shown mechanics and I enjoyed that. This time I've been given a breadcrumb of a plot and so far I don't have a connection to it and it's not making any sense and that is a bit of a negative. I'll continue to play the game but I haven't been charmed in the same way that I was in old school and it's a bit of a shame because I can see that this game has potential to get much better. I'm going to be exploring more of this and more of other MMOs in the near future. As ever, I'm open to recommendations, so you can throw them at me any way you can get hold of me. There's a link to a Discord server in the description, and you can find me there. I'm very active, so I'll get back to you quick enough. And if you want to join me on the journey of first impressions, then please consider hitting the subscribe button. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.